Well, people of God, it's good to be with you and to open God's word once again together. We want to look together at Exodus chapter 23, verses 20 through 33, and think a little bit about these verses today. This is God's own word. Behold, I send an angel before you to guard you on the way and to bring you to the place that I have prepared. Pay careful attention to him and obey his voice. Do not rebel against him, for he will not pardon your transgression, for my name is in him. But if you carefully obey his voice and do all that I say, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. When my angel goes before you and brings you to the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I blot them out, you shall not bow down to their gods nor serve them, nor do as they do, but you shall utterly overthrow them and break their pillars in pieces. You shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from among you. None shall miscarry or be barren in your land, and I will fulfill the number of your days. I will send my terror before you, and will throw into confusion all the people against whom you shall come, and I will make all your enemies turn their backs to you. Then I will set hornets before you, which shall drive out the Hivites, the Canaanites, and the Hittites from before you. I will not drive them out from before you in one year, lest the land become desolate and the wild beasts multiply against you. Little by little I will drive them out from before you, until you have increased and possessed the land. And I will set your border from the Red Sea to the Sea of the Philistines, and from the wilderness to the Euphrates, for I will give the inhabitants of the land into your hand, and you shall drive them out before you. You shall make no covenant with them and their gods. They shall not dwell in your land, lest they make you sin against me. For if you serve their gods, it will surely be a snare to you. Thus far the reading of God's word. May he bless it to us. So we've come now to sort of the end of the book of the covenant. And we've been reminded of a couple of things as we've gone through. Um, way back in Exodus chapter 3, when God spoke to Moses from the burning bush, he made two promises. Uh, the first that he was, was that he would deliver God's people out of their slavery in Egypt. And the second was in Exodus chapter 3, verse 8, that he would bring them up out of the land, out of that land to a good and broad land a land flowing with milk and honey. And when God spoke to his people from the beginning, from Sinai in the beginning of chapter 20, God reminded his people right there at the beginning that he had fulfilled one of those great promises that he had made. He told Moses that he would bring them out of slavery in Egypt, and he did. Uh, the Ten Commandments begins with a reminder of that. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. Uh, the first great promise God made had been fulfilled. And now as we come to the end of the book of the covenant and chapters that is, that is spanned really from the giving of the Ten Commandments, chapter 20, verse 22, all the way here to the end of verse 33, we have God repeating and explaining how he's going to bring about the accomplishment of what he's promised, how he would bring them into Canaan, the promised land. Um, and God reveals to them here that he's going to do that work through Israel's guardian angel, the angel who will go with them. Um, and secure the victory for them. And we want to think a little bit about this angel's identity. As God talks about this, who is he talking about? Because our passage begins with this wonderful declaration from the Lord. Behold, I send an angel before you to guard you on the way and to bring you to the place that I have prepared. That's good news, isn't it? There's an angel that's going to go with them uh, to perform two distinct functions. Uh, as we see in these verses, to guard God's people on the way to Canaan, and to bring God's people safely in. Um, God has prepared this place. He's going to send this angel to bring them safely there. What an encouraging word. Um, and as it becomes clear as this passage goes on, this angel is no ordinary angel. Um, this angel's voice is the voice of God. We see this in, vo in verses 21 and 22. Pay careful attention to him and obey his voice. Um, if you carefully obey his voice and do all that I say, he will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. Uh, they are to listen to this angel as if he is the very voice of God. And God says to rebel against him will be the same thing as to rebel against me, for my name is in him, God says. Um, the terror of this angel is the terror of God. That's what uh, God also promises in verses 28 and 29. 
Um, I will send them out before you. I will not drive them out before you in one year, lest the land become desolate and the wild beasts multiply against you. But the fear of this angel is the fear of the Lord. It will lead to panic and confusion. Uh, verse 27, I will send my terror before you and throw into confusion all the people. It's going to panic the people uh, when they see this angel. And we've seen this angel do these things before. Uh, we saw the angel of the Lord in the burning bush speaking with the voice of the Lord to Moses in Exodus chapter 3. We saw the angel of the Lord at the Red Sea going before the people. Uh, Exodus 14, 19 celebrated the angel of God in the pillar of cloud and fire moving between Israel and the Red Sea. Uh, God looked at Pharaoh and his army and threw them into a panic. Uh, God is praised in Exodus chapter 15, 16. Terror and dread have fell upon them. Because of the greatness of your arm, they are still as a stone. And so who is this angel that we've seen time and time again appearing, this angel of the Lord? This is no ordinary angel. This is no mere creature. This is the Lord himself appearing. I like how Calvin put it. This is the chief of the angels who has always been the head of the church. And who is the Lord who is the chief of the angels and who is the head of the church in every generation? Well, of course, it's the eternal Son of God, the second person of the Trinity, uh, Christ himself. And this fact that this angel was to go with them and that this angel was going to speak to them was to be a sobering warning to God's people because God made it clear that rebellion against his voice will not be forgiven. Um, when this angel speaks, when this chief of angels, the head of the church, speaks, the chief of the angels, the head of the church speaks, his voice must be listened to. Um, and what is the great reason that becomes clear in time and history as the Lord Jesus Christ comes into the world incarnate and speaks to the world? It becomes clear that his is the greatest and last voice spoken to sinful men. Um, that's how the book of Hebrews begins with that reminder that this is the last great voice to speak. Right? Long ago at many times in many ways God spoke to our fathers by the prophets but in these last days he has spoken to us by his son. So to refuse to listen to him and refuse to listen in such a way that you rebel against him can lead only to certain death. And Jesus made that point clear in his earthly ministry as well. I told you that you would die in your sins for unless you believe that I am he you will die in your sins. Uh, to, re to rebel against the voice of the angel of the Lord, to rebel against the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ is what we call apostasy or sinning against the Holy Spirit, deliberately sinning with a high hand. That's the sin that's in mind here, turning away from the living God and deliberately rebelling against him, outright rebellion. Um, John Calvin again describes this as a total defection or falling away from the gospel when a sinner offends not God in some one thing, but entirely renounces his grace. Um, this is what the Pharisees did. They heard of the Lord. They heard from the Lord himself. He spoke the word of life to them, and they rebelled against him. It's that kind of apostasy that the Holy Spirit warns of in Hebrews 10, 26 to 31. If we go on deliberately sinning after having received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a fearful expectation of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries. Anyone who set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy on the evidence of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you think will be deserved by the one who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has profaned the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified? <clears throat> excuse me, and has outraged the spirit of grace. For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. The sinful man cannot rebel against the head of the church and live. And all like the Pharisees who refuse him who is speaking. Um, Israel's being warned here not to refuse him who is speaking, not to rebel against him. Uh, those who do that in a persistent, deliberate way, rejecting him and rebelling against him, have only a fearful expectation of judgment, for Christ will not pardon this rebellion. Um, so it's a serious thing to listen to the voice and not rebel against him, but there's also tremendous comfort to be gleaned from the fact, especially for Israel, that this angel, the pre-incarnate Christ, should also 
be with them and be for them. That should be tremendous comfort because while there is no pardon for those who persistently enact, act in outright rebellion and apostasy against him, he gives life to those who listen to him, who hear his voice and who follow him. Uh, John 8, 51 reminds us, Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. Or John 6, 29, This is the work of God that you believe in him who he has sent. Uh, for those who believe in Christ, the passage reminds us, he has always been leading his people on a pilgrimage through this world. Uh, we don't want to reject him or rebel against him because he's the only one who can bring us safely in and sustain us through our adversaries and bring us safely home. To, to leave him is to really leave our only hope. But the great encouragement this passage gives us is this same Christ has always been guarding the way of his people. Whether it was prior to his incarnation or now after his incarnation and his, his ascension into glory, Christ is the one who guards our ways. It's that wonderful promise that he left the disciples with in Matthew 28. And behold, I am with you always to the very end of the age. Christ is the one who will bring us in safely to the place he's prepared for us. That's his promise, his ensured promise in John 14, 3. If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also. And so the same thing that was true for Israel is true for us today. We are entirely in the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the only way we can come safely into our heavenly home is if we listen to his voice and follow him. Our lives are completely in the hands of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's good news. Because he redeems our lives out of the slavery of sin. And he gathers us to himself. And he guards us all the days of our lives. And he brings us in to the glorious rest that he's prepared for us. Thanks be to God for giving us such a savior, the angel of the Lord who is Christ himself, who guards us and guides us and sees us safely home. Let's thank God for him. Father in heaven, we thank you for this rich promise that we read in this passage of our utter dependence on your son and that he was known in those days as the angel of the Lord, but in these last days we have seen him in incarnation and seen who he is as the head of the church for us. We pray, Lord, that none of us would rebel against him and deliberately reject the voice of him who is speaking, for just as the Israelites could expect nothing but, but terror if they rejected the angel's voice, we know that we can expect nothing but terror if we reject your son's voice. But likewise, if we follow him, we have a great advocate and champion, a great protector and guardian who promises to see us safely home. And so help us to listen to the voice of your son, to trust in him and his work, and know for certain that he will bring all your people safely home again. Thank you for him. Thank you for the salvation that he has won for us. Thank you for being a God who always keeps your promises. And so we ask that you would forgive us our sins and cleanse us from our righteousness. And we know that you will surely do it, for you've promised to do it. In the name of your son, our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Well, people of God, it's been good to spend this time with you. May the Lord bless you and keep you until we meet again.